On CTV News, we bring you more on yesterday's drowning at Horsetooth Reservoir. An NPR correspondent came to campus and we have the details. Then we explore the new lockers for the homeless in Old Town. All this and more on CTV News, starting now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Sydney Paul. And I'm Edgar Cidio. Here's what's happening in the news near you. The body of a 32-year-old man was pulled from Horsetooth Reservoir yesterday, according to a Lamar County press release. The poli police were notified that a man swimming near, Hor the, near the South Bay Swim Beach of the reservoir went under the water and did not resurface. The man was found unresponsive an hour later, 45 feet from the shore. He was transported to the hospital but did not survive. The man's identity has not been released at this time. CSU is partnering with the City of Fort Collins to work towards reaching their mutual renewable energy goals. Both the City and the University have a goal of using only renewable energy by the year 2030. To accomplish this, officials are looking into implementing a green tariff, which would provide green energy for Northern Colorado through the Platte River Power Authority. The City of Fort Collins will vote on an official renewable electricity plan on October 2nd. NPR National Security Correspondent Greg Meyer visited CSU yesterday where he talked about U.S. foreign policy in a post-9-11 world to a crowd in the LSC. Greg Meyer, NPR National Security Correspondent, recently visited CSU to talk about national security and the changing landscape of journalism in the world today. Some of the other th things we're seeing that I would sort of classify broadly as national security, um, I think are harder to see. Um, the Russian involvement in the elections or interference in 2016. Never lived through a time where, you know, you didn't have internet and social media, and you had a mainstream media, uh, many of them reporting similar types of stories, and you didn't have this explosion of outlets. In terms of fake news being spread around journalism, He's saying that it is not just a problem in the United States. Um, in terms of disinformation, that's that's out there now, and it, it, it's it it it's reaching the United States through again the internet, social media, and other forms that it didn't use to do. Meyer noted that foreign policy has also fallen victim to polarization in the U.S. The U.S. U, there used to be a pretty broad general consensus among Republicans and Democrats about foreign policy. Students also weighed in on Meyer's talk about national security in a post-9-11 world. As an environmental engineer major, um, it's really cool to relate uh, what we talk about in class about helping other countries, um, also our domestic problems. When asked about Russia meddling in the 2018 midterms, he said that the U.S. is better prepared than they were in 2016 people in the intelligence community, and they're saying so far they haven't seen the big Russian push that they saw in, in 2016. If you would like to keep up with Meyer, his podcast can be found on NPR. As part of CSU's Ag Week, the College of Agricultural Sciences will host its Ag Innovation Summit on Thursday, September 20th and Friday, September 21st. The summit will focus on ag research, technology, and food safety. There will be multiple industry specialists speaking, including Sally Rocky, Executive Director of the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research. The summit will take place in the Lori Student Center, and there's a student entry fee of $10. Do you love learning, but feel like the traditional classroom isn't the right place for you? Well, CSU's Mount Campus is a great alternative. The campus spans 1,600 acres and is located between Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest and Rocky Mountain National Park. The Mountain Campus has been holding classes since 1915 and became an official CSU campus in the 1960s. Now the campus holds classes for students from Warner College Natural Resources, but it also hosts conferences edu and educational opportunities for the community as well. The campus is open for activities through mid-October. Last July was the opening of the new CSU Health and Medical Center. While the Student Health Network was concerned about relocating off campus and worried the move might be inconvenient for the students, the center has actually seen a 5% increase in patient visitation in this past year, and they plan to see that number increase. To find out more about the services provided by the Student Health Network and the CSU Health Center, you can visit health.colostate.edu. 
The first six locker recipients at the Fort Collins Mennonite Fellowship received their lockers this week, and more will soon follow. However, there is an appeal pr in process from the church's neighbors who are concerned about the locker's re residential location and lack of supervision. Funding for the lockers was initially rejected in February, but the church raised nearly $10,000 to fund themselves. The Planning and Zoning Board approved the locker operations and allowed the project to move forward. The City of Orcon's City Council members will, vote, will meet on October 9th to uh, rule on the val validity of the appeal. CSU's Stryer Center for Public Service Leadership and the Department of Political Science are working with the Washington Center to send 10 CSU students to Washington, D.C. for an internship opportunity. The program will last for a semester and will count for 15 credits. It is open to students of all majors, and interested students must submit a personal statement about their career goals. The spring 2019 application is still open, but it's due on September 26th. This opportunity will be available for students every semester moving forward. You might have noticed an interesting sight over campus over the campus sky today. ASDSU commissioned a plane to fly over campus as a part of their initiative to change Fort Collins' U plus two policy. The plane made its rounds flying over campus towing a banner that read, U plus two survey, check your mail. ASDSU began campaigning with canvassing last week. It was pretty neat to see that plane fly over campus and we'll see what ASDSU does with uh, U plus two over the past next couple months. Definitely, it looks like ASDSU's campaign has reached new heights. Sure. Well, that's all we have for news. Stay tuned for weather, sports, and entertainment, all coming up now on CTV. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It just makes me hungry. For bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. You are listening to 90.5 KCSU Fort Collins with DJ Mean Beat. DJ Nightshade. DJ Wildcard. Music to me is one of the best creative outlets that I can think of. An escape from the real world. Music to me is an expression of love. To go from like folk to hip hop to like classic rock, 1960s bossa nova. With music, there's like no boundaries. I work here because I love music, and you do too. How's it going, Rams? I'm Kyle Witter. Um, unfortunately, Allie couldn't make it today, so I am filling in for her. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, current conditions. The uh, high today was around 84 degrees. It was very sunny and um, not a lot of wind today. The sunset is going to be at, was at 7.03 p.m. So as we get into fall, it's going to start getting earlier and earlier. So be sure to take advantage of that daylight before it is gone in the early afternoon. Here's a uh, look at some of the conditions around campus and around the uh, city today. These were taken from various spots around campus. The fountain over by Natural Sciences, the flowers over by the physics building. The oval was looking really good today. Um, very, very green, very luscious. Our um, overnight, um, overnight lows are going to be 56 in Fort Collins. Sterling is going to be 57. Um, we're going to be 57 to 63 on the Eastern Plains, depending on where you're at. Pueblo is going to be 60, and Telluride and Gunnison are the coldest, with um, 38 and 45 in those places. Tomorrow's highs, tomorrow's forecast is going to be a high of 87. Low of 56, there's going to be a chance of rain. It's going to be cloudy, so be sure to bring an umbrella or a jacket if you're heading out. Sunset tomorrow is going to be at 7.02 p.m., so a minute earlier. Again, it's going to start getting darker earlier as we're going, coming into fall. and Tomorrow's highs, we're going to have 87 degrees in Fort Collins, so it's going to be a little warmer than it was today. Um, 84 in Sterling. Um, looks like the warmest is going to be out in Lamar. It's going to be 99 degrees. 
and then 72 in Gunnison, so a little cooler in the mountains. And um, that's our weather for, the, for tomorrow. And then our five-day forecast, it's going to be warm again all the way through Thursday, 87, 92. And then Friday, it's going to be 76, so a little bit cooler, um, while our lows hang around 58, upper 50s to the upper 50s to the upper 40s. Um, don't leave just yet. Stay tuned for Sports with Jason. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. What's up, Ram fans? I'm your sports anchor, Jason Ortiz. And I'm here to break down all the CSU athletics with this week. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This past weekend, CSU took on the Florida Gators at the Swamp. CSU was looking to get their second win this season, not only overall, but over another SEC school as well. Right from the get-go, it was a great defensive start for the Rams. However, special teams from CSU really put the Rams in a predicament all game long. Florida freshman Amari Bernie blocked Ryan Stonehouse's punt and after a couple missed blocks, the Gators recovered the ball inside the five-yard line. After that, it was all downhill. Another blocked punt and a punt return for a touchdown. However, Toby McBride was the lone bright spot for the Rams as he caught his first career touchdown at the, the start of the third quarter. But that was all she wrote for the Rams. Florida routed CSU 48 to 10, and now the Rams sit at a, a record of one and three. Going into this weekend against Illinois State, the Rams are looking to bounce back against a very well-balanced Redbirds offense. Illinois State is 2-0 entering this week and have put up 40-plus points in each of their first two games. Yesterday, Coach Bobo talked about how playing a tough non-conference schedule benefits his players. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot of good teams in our conference, and you know, I'm not even thinking about that yet because this team we get played this week is, is very, very good. Uh, but, you know, the the message will be, you know, what we've what we've done and who we played. We're one and three, okay. But we we still have a chance to be a very good football team if we can limit some mistakes, all right, and take what we've learned in these four games uh, and use it as our advantage of having to play bigger, faster, stronger people. CSU and Illinois State will kick off Ag Day Saturday at one in the afternoon with an orange out at Canvas Stadium. So this week, we're back at it again. Uh, we have the Triple J Pick'em Challenge. If you don't know what this is, it's where CTV Sports anchors, we had Jared Stratton, he does Thursdays, Jessica Mendoza, she usually does Mondays, but she's here, and myself. We make our big, uh, the picks for the biggest upcoming NCAA football games and see who comes out on top. Last week, it was Jared, and he went a perfect five for five. So I don't know what we, what we gotta do this week to knock off Jared. <laughs> we gotta knock him off, though. Yeah. <laughs> so this week's matchups are as followed. So as we look at it, we got CSU versus Illinois State. All being Rams, we got to take CSU. We got to take CSU. Also, as Brian mentioned in the Monday Night Sports Show, CSU is um, undefeated on Ag Day, which is going to be this week. So we're definitely hoping to use that luck going into this week for our Ag Day. Yeah, coming off two tough games, we should be able to knock off Illinois State. Absolutely. However, now we got TCU at Texas. There you go. TCU coming off a big loss uh, at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Texas coming off a big win at USC. Yeah, that win against USC was really impressive. That's why I picked Texas to win this one. 
Got to say, go Longhorns here. Yeah, I mean, I went with TCU because, I mean, losing to Ohio State, it's not too big of a deal because they're one of the top teams in the country, but you never know. It should be a good game. Stanford and Oregon. This will be a really good game. They're only separated by a one-point favorite, and that's there going towards Stanford just because they're the highest seed. There, yeah, that's true. But I got to go with my Ducks. I've been to Oregon. I've been to Eugene, and I've been in Autzen Stadium before. They're at home, so I feel like that energy is really going to be used in their favor. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to this game. I would love to see Oregon win this one. It's going to be tough. Bryce Love, yep. I mean, he's one of the best running backs in the, in the country. Absolutely. Texas A&M versus Alabama. It's hard to pick against Alabama. We <laughs> know it's hard, but you took Texas A&M. I did. I really did. Um, if I'm wrong, which I may be, I think that they'll at least hang on until the very end of the game. I think it'll end up being pretty close. Um, I think definitely for the Aggies to win this one, their defense is going to have to stop Bama. Um, they're going to have to stop Bama on third down. They're usually converting 60% on third down, so I'm really hoping to see their defense step up here. Yeah, and Texas A&M gave a Clemson a run for their money. They only lost to them by two. Absolutely. All right, final, we got FAU at UCF. Uh, the reigning national champions, University of Central Florida. They, I mean, they've proven why they're in the in the top 25, but yeah, that's why we all took them, right? Yeah, I don't have much to say about this one. I mean, I think it's definitely going to be a blowout for UCF. Yeah, FAU has Lane Kiffin at coach, but you never know what could happen. <laughs> so now we're heading into CSU Volleyball conference play. After finishing their non-conference schedule last weekend, CSU was in Boulder for the Colorado Classic. CSU finished 8-4 and four in the non-conference, and now they head to Reno to face off against Nevada, who is 7-4. So what do you see about the volleyball team heading into Mountain West Conference play? So I'm really excited to see this conference play get started. I think it's, um, or I know it's going to be a lot more competitive than these past couple games have been. The conference is really important, obviously. Um, CSU went 2-0 and last year against Nevada. So I definitely think it was actually two sweeps last year for CSU against Nevada. So I know there's been some team changes, a couple of people graduating and a couple of new people coming in, but I'm excited to see um, Ellie Gubser keep playing. Hopefully mm -hmm. she'll continue on with the team and I think it'll be a good game this weekend. Yeah, going into no, uh, conference play, they they've been seem like they gelled well. Against Boulder, they seem like they were hitting the ball really well um, with Olivia Nicholson being at Libero. Yeah. We don't know if she'll still be there or not with see if Amanda Young comes back or not. Yeah. But it seems like it could be uh, really good year for the Rams this year. Yeah, I agree. I think that this new team that's been coming out lately, it's been really impressive to see how people have been coming in in new positions. And like I said before, Ellie Gibbs are coming in for her first couple games as well. Yeah, sounds good. So, so well, we, we should uh, wait and see what happens. Yeah. All right, so back again this week, we have your top three plays in CSU athletics from this past weekend. Here we got Brianna Runnels and Katie Olasek. They had some big ups to stay alive in this game versus CU. Katie Olasek makes a huge backwards diving play to get the ball back up to over the net for Kirsty Hillier, who then actually finishes the point. Coming up next, we have Beth Plenel, who scored her first goal of the year, and it beat a very talented SMU team. SMU was 4-1-1 one one coming into the game, I believe, and she did great. Finally here, we got Toby McBride, first career touchdown at CSU versus Florida. He was our lone star for that game. I mean, can't much you can say about Toby McBride. He's a big presence out there on, on Saturday. Well, that's all we have for me, Rams. And make sure you follow the CSU CTV Twitter to stay updated on CSU Sports throughout the week. But don't go anywhere. Justin has all your entertainment news up next. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back 
in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back, Rams. I'm your host, Justin Rios, back at it with another exciting entertainment report. Let's dive right in. Cute dogs at City Park? Count me in. The 23rd annual Doggy Olympics a dog is a dog-loving competition that happened this past weekend. Canine companions of all ages, sizes, and ability are invited to compete in 14 events from a 25-yard dash to a toy catch and an obstacle course. The proceeds go to the Larimer Animal People Partnership, a volunteer-based animal therapy group promoting awareness and education with animals here in Fort Collins. And of course, who can resist seeing cute puppies strut their stuff? So adorable. <laughs> who's, who's a good boy? You are. If you're looking to volunteer for the Larimer Larima Animal P People Partnership, you can contact them at info at callapp.org. The Pride Resource Center is hosting QueerBQ at tomorrow evening at City Park Shelter number seven. QueerBQ is an annual event aimed to form friendship and understanding in the LGBTQ plus community. You can chill out, eat some delicious free food, and meet some new people. Don't be afraid to bring your friends and family too. The Pride Resource Center at CSU provides information on sexual orientation, gender, and identity. If you're queer, questioning, or simply curious for information provided, the Pride Resource Center is, an, is open through Monday through Friday in the Laurie Student Center in room 232. Ever wish you could go to Oktoberfest? Plane tickets to Germany are really expensive. Too bad there's nothing here in Fort Collins. Oh wait, there is. Lather on some sunscreen, bring your shades, and crack open a cold one with the friends. The scathing heat couldn't keep me away from the festivities happening downtown this past weekend. Fortoberfest is an annual outdoor music festival in Old Town Square, celebrating that one special thing you can't live without, music. From the New Orleans and Louisiana funk to the soulful Rocky Blues found here in Fort Collins. Fortoberfest is a time to sing, dance, or chill. Fort Collins is a very nice, close town, and you know, in New Orleans, people are like family. And when it comes to music, music brings people together. So we really like to get people out and join in and dance and not worry about anything else and just escape for a moment. It's nice to be able to have your family out here while the adults are having fun. A lot of times they block it off for just the adults, so this is excellent. The sweet, refreshing copper colored beer offered was, of course, thirst quenching. You'll be saying, honey, I brought the kids with Fortoberfest, welcoming all ages to sing and dance to the beat. Well, from somebody from a different state where we don't have this, to have a city where you have this block that's kind of blocked off for the community, that has this like fountain, a stage where you can play music, um, different types of bars that allow you to sit outside, all these different aspects that you don't see in a lot of different states. Though, friendly reminder, alcohol is an adult-only beverage. Please drink responsibly. If you missed your shot at seeing the spectacular performances, don't worry because Fortoberfest comes back to Fort Collins each fall season. Deep breaths, everybody. Remember to enunciate. And above all else, never forget your lines. These are but a few things theater students remind themselves as they prepare to dazzle the audience. God of Carnage, a CSU production led entirely by students, is a play about two sets of parents coming together to discuss a scuffle between their children, only to find that conflict isn't just reserved for kids. God of Carnage is free and open to the public on September 21st to the 23rd at 7.30 in the evening at the Large Acting Lab in the University the Center for the Arts. Well, Rams, that's all I have. That I'm all out of time. Uh, tune in tomorrow for CTV Cooks, where they'll, be, well, they'll bake up some heavenly cupcakes and French toast. Take care, have a great rest of your evening, and see you next week.